Thank you very much for uh, a kind introduction. Good afternoon, everyone. Very honored to be here. It's actually a, a big challenge to talk after the wind surf. I remember it was probably around 10 years ago, he and I uh, had exact the same sequence in Globalcom. Uh, I felt the pressure then, I felt the pressure now. Um, but I promise I will talk about a terrestrial, <laughs> talk about the things on Earth. Uh, I want to thank uh, the APRICOT, the APEN, for inviting me here. Uh, this is indeed a very impressive uh, event. Uh, this is my first time, uh, and uh, I truly enjoyed interaction with uh, you know, friends and the people from industry, academia, and also the policy makers. Um, some of you know I happen to spend this month in Hong Kong uh, as a visiting professor of uh, Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. In Microsoft, they give a two-month sabbatical every seven years uh, to some of uh, the R&D executives. So I'm spending this entire month in Hong Kong. Uh, and, and through the month, I truly learned quite a great deal from uh, uh, the professors uh, and the policymakers. And uh, I'm really impressed about the quality of uh, the professors and also the uh, uh, the overall enthusiasm of the internet industry. Uh, and uh, the permanent secretary, uh, Elizabeth Tsai, uh, just gave a, a very, uh, you know, just great uh, uh, summary of what the internet in Hong Kong is all about. Uh, and I am very impressed with uh, you know, the number of hotspots, what is uh, almost 10,000, uh, and the broadband penetration, and uh, the, you know, advanced infrastructure. Um, when I talk with uh, the chairman of uh, Internet Society here in Hong Kong, Charles Monk, about the, my topic, and he told me, you know, first, to talk about uh, the state of uh, China Internet. And then you talk about the future of uh, Internet, what he envisioned the technology going to be in five, ten years. And you should talk about Microsoft. Well, and they should do that within 30 minutes. And plus, uh, uh, it cannot be too technical because uh, the breadth of uh, the audience. So I will do just that. I'll try to accommodate all this within 25, 30 minutes. Uh, so first, so what's happening in China's internet? It's just so exciting. It's uh, nothing uh, like that, you know, industries like the China's internet. And right now, China has the largest population, over 400 million users, uh, number one in the mobile internet. And the right now is number two on the PC, and it's going to take over US next year, become the largest uh, in the PC users in the world. And the second, it has a very different user habits and demographics. The average Chinese user is actually 25 years old versus US, which is 42 years old. A lot of people use internet from a cafe, about 40 percent. And US is mainly from home and some from work. And also, if you look at the top three applications on internet, it's quite different. In China, it's really the music and the video, uh, some uh, uh, communication chatting with IM, uh, and, and news. And it's a lot of gaming. And the US is mainly search. Uh, you know, so I am. Uh, there's uh, uh, shopping. Uh, so it's very different. And also in China, one thing that's unique is domestic companies are really doing very well, very different from other countries. The multinationals. Like Google, or including Microsoft and Amazon, and we actually are working really hard. We're you know, to struggling to a certain extent. There are a lot of reasons. You know, if you look at, uh, you know, if I list just three. The main reason is really the lack of uh, agility. You know, it takes too long for us to make decisions. You know, we will improve. Uh, but if you look at the top three Chinese internet companies, you know, Tencent and Baidu and Alibaba, uh, the market cap is over 100 billion. 
and it's growing. You know, there's a lot of criticism in the internet, China internet. Despite the, the tremendous market success, you know, there are a lot of people saying there's not much innovation. It's all copycat. You know, it's uh, all the business model and the technology are imitations. And I personally disagree with that. Uh, comments, a statement. Indeed, China has learned a great deal from the U.S. in the last uh, 10 or 15 years. Pretty much everything. Right? Uh, but there was a lot of innovation. The innovation especially how to adapt to the local uh, market and how to provide a you know, better service. Uh, so I would characterize as probably 80% uh, learning and 20% innovation. And innovation going to become a lot more enhanced in the future. And there's some very good examples. You know, if people use uh, the, the Weibo, the Xinlang Sino Weibo, uh, it learned from Twitter, but it goes way beyond. Uh, like Tencent, the virtual goods, and the, the Soho IME, there's some very good examples. In fact, uh, you look at the, the features, uh, the capability are probably better than some of uh, the tools, the technology from multinationals. And the competition is also very intense, the fierce. Uh, and I, uh, I'm going to talk more about that, but a good quote from the San Jose Mercury News is the Chinese internet is like a gladiatorial, uh, no holes, bars, fight to the death. There is no ground rules. And sometimes you know, the companies do get carried away, uh, as you know. The recent war between Tencent and the 360. You know, some of the Chinese audience probably know this story very well. I'm not going into the details, but this is a typical case that two companies really competed and uh, somehow lost uh, the, the rationale why they competed. Uh, you know, both CEOs had regretted to say, well, they probably should have done things differently. And also, you know, for people who use uh, Kaixin, I don't know if anybody uses Kaixin, uh, there are two Kaixin in China uh, some time ago. One, a real Kaixin, and the other is fake, just with the Kaixin uh, domain name. But then it completely kind of copied the games, and uh, a lot of people get confused. How come there are two exactly the same, you know, same, same uh, company? And also there, Shenzhai effect, uh, limitation, uh, imitations, just between the Chinese companies. And I'm actually hide it, uh, you know, on, on the right, I hide the, the company name. And one company came up with this uh, browser, and you know, a pretty cool experience. And the other, there's another company, three months later, came up with exactly the same thing, same UI, same experience, uh, and actually with a much bigger uh, audience. And also, the business models in the China internet are quite creative. You know, gaming is a huge thing in China. You can buy ammunition, you can buy all these weapons to become uh, more powerful, more skilled. You can get, uh, raise your levels. And the reason I learned, actually, there are companies who you can hire right, to, to do that for you. And they charge probably 50%. Uh, of the, the goods you buy, but you can get uh, uh, elevated instantly. And also there's uh, this company, uh, or Kaixin actually doing uh, the social gaming with uh, stealing vegetables, you know, parking lots. A lot of uh, people in China get uh, added to it. It became actually instant success, probably in three or four months with uh, almost 200 million users. And at one point, when I uh, came to the, uh, my office, and I see a lot of people just playing this game during, you know, during daytime, during work day. And I made a, a tough decision, first time in my life, to censor this, this, <laughs> this particular site. I actually blocked it for three months, which I normally don't, wouldn't go. But 
a lot of uh, the young kids. I have about 3,500 engineers you know, working uh, in Beijing and in Shanghai. A lot of people just get so addicted to that game, so I, I decided to, to do that. It's not a good example, but there, sometimes you have to uh, make tough decisions. I recently also trying to sign up in a uh, uh, IM service. I'm not going to mention the company. And you know, when you sign up, they, it's free. Okay? So they provide you all this beautiful, and nice, fashionable uh, clothing and a large selection. Then the second month, they ask you to pay for five RMB. If you don't, they're going to scale you down to somebody who is uh, not as cool. And the third month, if you refuse to pay, they're going to <laughs> take off your clothes. <laughs> and, and, and imagine uh, the next month you don't pay. And, and I didn't use my real name, by the way. 